Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here. We gotta talk about the severe weather outbreak this weekend. It's gonna start to the west and head our way into the weekend. So if you're watching me in the Carolinas, look at me in the Carolinas. You do not need to cancel or change all of your weekend plans. This is a very small window where you need to be weather aware and be cautious, but otherwise 95 to 98% of the weekend is going to be fine. No issue Saturday and a lot of Sunday will be fine. You just gotta work around a small window in the morning, which I'm going to talk about here. So let's first things first, where is our system right now? I'm going to pause it right here and you can see our system right here. This is where we're going to see today's outbreak. Tomorrow it's going to shift here and then by Sunday it's going to be pushing towards the east. So that kind of gives you kind of a lay of the land right now um, of what's happening. So let's get to the severe weather outlooks because this is the most important part. I'm going to pop them on real quickly here. This is today's severe weather outbreak um, and outlook. You could see it right there in the middle of the country from Iowa down into the deep south. And this is actually gonna be an area we're gonna watch very carefully into the afternoon hours. So while that's the overall outlook for today, I wanna to show you the tornado outlook because I always like to highlight this. So the green is two, five, 10, 15%. So 15% significant. I know sometimes you'll hear those numbers and go, that doesn't seem like that big of a chance. But remember, on any given day, the chance of a tornado is usually zero or close to it. So to see a 2%, that's a 200% increase. 5%, that's a 500% increase. So you get the idea. 10%, that's a 1,000% increase over a normal day. So once you start seeing these per percentages go up, especially above 2%, that becomes really, really significant. Um, probability of damaging winds, it's even higher. It's like 45 to 50%. So definitely a big wind event with this system as it heads our way. So that's today, tomorrow, Saturday start to see it shift to the south. So this area in particular, and honestly, this is where we're likely gonna see the most significant tornado risk is in this area. And that's why I'm a little concerned in the Carolinas. I expect this to weaken, but when you see big tornadoes to our west, you always kind of sweat it out. Are these things gonna weaken as they head our way? I expect it, but the question is how much of a weakening trend. We can look at the tornado probabilities tomorrow and notice same thing, pretty big probability down to the deep south. So if you have friends or family in that area, please tell them to stay weather aware. Charge devices have multiple ways to get warnings. Then on Sunday, the risk shifts into the Carolinas and as expected, we're in the low to medium risk. So this should make sense as the system moves our way. So let's get right to the future cast. All right, so this is what everybody wants to see, the future cast. So this is our short range rapid refresh and just to kind of cut through the jargon there, we run this model every hour out to 18 hours and every six hours we run it out to 48 hours and what it is it's a rapid refresh it's basically a constant model so it, it corrects every hour to what's happening and tries to forecast the next you know 18 to, to 48 hours so this is the 48 hour version from this morning you can see the system i mean this is this is going to be crazy you're going to see a lot of wind we've already seen wind gusts in texas over 80 miles per hour not with thunderstorms just with the strong jet stream and the surface wind. So you see the first clusters of storms, one up here, one down here. That's why you see such a big um, outlook today. Remember, I'll turn on the outlook again real quickly just to kind of give you an idea. Um, it'll make sense. So you can see why that outlook is in place, right? That makes total sense right there um, as you see this evolve this afternoon. So we go through time. This is into tonight. Again, man, the deep south is going to see multiple waves of severe weather. This one up here, straight line, more of a tornado risk here. We'll go into tonight and then we go into um, early Saturday morning. So this is going to be, I'm going to stop this around, let's say 6 a.m. So we get into day two, right? The outlook for day two, look what happens there. We start to see this shift to the south, just to give you some perspective there. We go through time, and in North Carolina, some of these showers might make it to the mountains, but these are going to weaken. The new storms that develop down here, there's a new piece of energy that's going to come. We actually see some remnants of it here coming into the south. That's why there's such a significant risk for tornadoes down in this area. I mean, it's probably some of the I want to say most robust ingredients I've seen for tornadoes in quite some time in that part of the country. So that's why I say if you have friends or family down there, coworkers, make sure they're staying weather aware. So we go through Saturday afternoon. You can see we've got supercells in here. I mean, these are all supercells, um, probably embedded supercells. And what supercells are rotating thunderstorms. They're the ones that produce the big tornadoes, okay? Supercells are lone storms. They like to eat and feed off their own energy. They don't like to be around other storms. So when you see them isolated like this, that's never a good sign. Um, so they're pushing to the east. We go into Saturday night. So again, a Charlotte FC game, I, like I said, there's a 20% chance. Can't rule out an isolated shower for the game, but we're not worried about severe weather. That's why Saturday, no issues in the Carolinas other than a passing shower. We go into Saturday night. We're going to stop this uh, close to midnight, so 1130 p.m. Obviously still nothing going on in, in the mountains. We start to see some rain, but the main action is right here. This is 
this is what we're watching. So you notice some things, it starts to look a little bit weaker, but there's still some embedded structures that probably supercells in there. Shifts to the east through the early morning hours. I'll stop this at 2.30 in the morning. We've got a line now forming, starting to come together. What we call squall line or a QLCS, uh, a squiggly squall line. Basically S curves within the line. That usually indicates straight line winds and embedded tornadoes occasionally. We'll go to four o'clock in the morning. So if you're planning for the Carolinas, so think about this, if you're in the Carolinas, nothing's happened yet and it's four o'clock in the morning on Sunday and this is the first threat for severe weather. So that's why you don't change anything Saturday. And if you're in, in North Carolina, if you can get through this morning wave of rain, you're probably gonna be in good shape. So we go into the wee hours of the morning, get closer to six or seven, start to see this line push across. To me right now, the Piedmont, 6 to 8 a.m. starts to move across. Will there be embedded tornadoes in there? Hard to say, but it definitely looks more like a squall line, which is going to be an indication of more straight line winds. Um, we go to 8 a.m. We go, and that's where we stop because that's 48 hours. So, so to give you kind of an idea, if you can get through this morning wave of storms right here, which will be pushing east into the afternoon, once this back edge gets here, which remember is there at 8 a.m., once that pushes east, it'll be fine as well. So that's why I said just time this out. We'll be watching this in real time. Saturday, Saturday morning is the big issue. So let's go to the timing. This is my timing map. And you can see this area in the mountains, I have three to 6 a.m. across the Piedmont, seven to nine, and then 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and beyond. So in Eastern North Carolina, Central North Carolina, definitely afternoon, um, early afternoon into mid afternoon and pushing off to the east. So that's why we're watching that area very carefully. And just to break down some of the, some of the other impacts, I'll show that real quick. So I'm, I moved my head down the bottom a little better. So this is for the Western Carolinas, kind of the Charlotte, Greensboro, Metro, you know, I-77 corridor. Um, risk for tornadoes in the morning, 6, 7 a.m. to about 11, but that's where the biggest wind threat is. Now these could go up or down. This is why you gotta stay weather aware because these things will fluctuate up or down depending on how things unfold. I do wanna show you a couple of parameters in those short range models to kind of give you an idea on what's happening. I'm gonna back this up a little bit and show you the significant tornado parameter. So basically what this is, just in layman's terms, this is, these are the ingredients where we know we have ingredients for um, tornadoes to form. So you can see how, how stout this is. STP is what we call a significant tornado parameter. It only goes up to 10, right, or 11 <laughs> on the scale. And sometimes you see 14s in there, meaning it's pretty much off the charts. We'll go into Saturday and you can see, I'm gonna scroll down just so you can see the, 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 the legend. Look at the legend at the bottom here. Um, it only goes up to 10 here, but we're seeing numbers above that. That tells you to kind of off the charts uh, in green. It doesn't mean there's going to be tornadoes, but that means you have the maximum amount of potential for it. So think about it, you know, um, ingredients. If you have, a, you know, the potential for a fire, you've got a lot of fuel, you've got ignition sources. It doesn't mean they come together, but all those ingredients are clearly in place and, and in some cases off the charts. I want to show you pushing this off to the east and into the Carolinas and then early on, Sunday morning, and that's why I have a zoomed in view of this right here. Um, again, this is 8 a.m. Sunday morning. Again, not off the charts like we're seeing to our southwest, but still um, you're seeing some embedded cells in here where we've got one, two or three. So anytime I see a, a two or three, I, especially in the Carolinas, it's like, OK, there's the chance there are the ingredients there for tornadoes. So this is something we have to watch very carefully. That's why I said the tornado risk could go up or down based on how things unfold. We know there's going to be severe weather, but the tornado risk is the one thing that's uncertain. The other thing we can look at are basically rotation tracks. Again, don't look at these as actual tornado tracks, but rotating thunderstorm tracks. And rotating thunderstorms tend to be the ones that produce tornadoes. So it's not a one-to-one -one ratio, but I always look to see where these are. And again, the other thing, don't look for the specific location. Just look at how many there are in kind of the general area. So you see two clusters. Today's outbreak is likely up in there, but then you start seeing on Saturday, the outbreak here, not much in the Carolinas, which is a good sign, but remember this only goes through 8 a.m. on Sunday morning. So um, definitely shows a weakening trend, right? Because the, they start moving east and it gets cooler and we see less of a tornado threat, mainly probably because uh, the surface is cooling down. But man, these tracks in Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, definitely gotta watch these very carefully. So let me give you one more tip or piece of advice here. Um, I definitely want you to stay weather aware. Um, and I'm going to pull up this graphic because this is the most important thing I can show you this weekend um, is make sure you have three ways to get warnings. I'll move my head out of the way. And what do I mean by that? Okay, everybody has a phone. Wireless emergency alerts are built into your phone already. That's great. 
um, weather apps like ours, WCNC, but honestly, any app that gives you push notifications based on the location of your phone, watching TV or monitoring the weather um, via live stream, social media. Just remember streams and even TVs delayed a little bit. So make sure when you're getting storm tracks and timing, know that there could be a, a minute, two minute delay. So think a couple minutes ahead of time. Social media is great. Um, right now you're watching me on social media. Um, great way to get heads up. Not always great for warnings, but if you are gonna get warnings there, make sure you have notifications turned on for me. I push all the warnings for our area on my Facebook page and my Twitter account. So if you're on Twitter or Facebook or X in this case, I would send all alerts, severe thunderstorm warnings, tornado warnings for all of the Carolinas. No weather radio if you have one. And honestly, one of the biggest things that works for us, texting friends or family. Just like I'm telling you today, if you have friends or family to the west, southwest, where we're seeing the big uh, severe weather outbreak today, um, that is an area if you can call them and let them know. And again, I'll go back to the day one. This is today's outlook. This is tomorrow's outlook. And then this is Sunday's outlook. So if you have friends over in here, especially tomorrow, um, this is going to be a big, big risk back there. So make sure you call and text them and let them know because they may not be paying attention. You know how we all have those family members who don't pay attention. Let them know the risk of severe weather. Of course, I will post more updates today, tomorrow, and throughout the weekend and keep you covered.